Welcome to the Wolverine Recruiting Show. Clayton Safey with EJ Holland here from the Wolverine.com. Use the promo code BLUE60 over at the Wolverine.com for two months of our premium content for free. Uh, we're going to start with uh, talking about the latest on Michigan football recruiting, and that, uh, of course, starts right now with Will Johnson, the five star corner out of Girls Point. We talk about him a lot. We saw him this week at the Sound Mind, Sound Body College Evaluation Camp. He did not work out, but he was there hanging out. His dad, Dion, is a former Michigan defensive back and the co-founder of Sound Mind, Sound Body. Um, so he was kind of hanging out there, and you got the chance to talk to him. Uh, it looks to be possibly nearing a decision here coming up. Uh, I guess what was your overall vibe on where his head is at right now because Michigan's got a new staff on the, particularly on the defensive uh, side of the ball coming in we'll talk about Maurice Linguist uh, in just a little bit but a new D coordinator and Mike McDonald um, what, what was the vibe I guess with him when it comes to Michigan and then when it comes to the other schools that are seem to be at the top of the list like Ohio State and USC yeah, I think uh, with Will right now, it's just about building relationships with the new Michigan staff members. Uh, Mike McDonald texted him shortly after he was officially announced. I know uh, Maurice Linguist is going to have a chat with him either today or tomorrow. So I think that, you know, it, again, it's about building relationships. Will told me he had a date set. Uh, in his mind to make a commitment. Uh, I'm not really going to unveil the date, but it was later this month. But I, I think he's uh, leaning towards not making a commitment on that date anymore. I think he wants to give Michigan a fair shake. I also think uh, Will wants to enjoy the process a little longer and maybe see a few other schools. His dad talked about making a trip to Cincinnati because they just actually offered and had uh, have some connections there and uh, maybe seeing some schools down south to give Will that experience and, and make sure, you know, they're not missing anything. But I, I don't expect this recruitment to go very long. Like, uh, I would be surprised if we're here in April or May and Will's not, you know, Will doesn't have a date set or hasn't already made his decision. So I think it's going to come soon, but I think it's still enough time for linguist and mcdonald to really really develop a strong relationship with him um, i mean if we're being completely honest right now i think ohio state probably has the edge uh will's a midwest guy he I, I don't think he really wants to go further away from home he did enjoy his usc visit but i would say the trojans are probably running third in that recruitment or they're probably running you know, first in the Damani recruitment. So I would say right now, I don't think the package deal is going to happen. Um, at the same time with Damani, I think he's a kid you can recruit long term. And again, Linguist, who we'll get to in a little bit, is capable of landing elite level DBs and has done in the past. Um, I think Will is a guy that once he commits, it's over. And Dion reiterated that to me this weekend. He said, when we commit, that is it. Will's not going to decommit no matter what happens, coaching changes, whatever. He's sticking with that commitment. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think that's interesting and that's a little scary if you're Michigan because you're kind of a little bit behind, like we talked about, with those staff changes, you know, and he's a legacy kid, so you feel like you'd always maybe have that foot in the door. But if he's, you know, going to close things off and, you know, be completely committed somewhere, then I think that Michigan fans could be a little bit, worried about that at the same time it sounds like maybe he you know was going to pull the trigger and maybe he's going to wait a little bit longer um and then since we talked to him you know on monday and saw him at sound mind sound body uh maurice linguist out of the dallas cowboys former texas a&m defensive backs coach coached at minnesota coached at baylor went to baylor um you know has ties all across texas just like you um but you know basically he is coming in as looks like the corners coach and the co-defensive coordinator when it comes to will specifically and then we can talk about maybe a little bit more the overall impact that linguist is going to have on michigan recruiting when it comes to will johnson specifically is this a good enough hire coupled with mike mcdonald as a defensive coordinator uh you know so the, the d coordinator and then the co-dc is actually your position coach is that enough you think to get michigan back maybe on top in this recruitment where it probably once was uh you know even maybe a few months ago 
Yeah, like I said with Will, it's it's about developing relationships. So while, you know, Linguist is a great recruiter, um, an elite level recruiter, uh, you know, McDonald's doesn't have as much experience from a recruiting perspective. So again, it's it's relationships. It's getting to know these guys. There isn't really, you know, much of a pre-existing relationship. So, um, you know, for Will, it's not, you know, huge from a sense like, oh, Will knew this guy from like a previous, you know, school that he's already been recruited by. Like these are brand new relationships that they're really going to have to develop. So I think if anyone can come in late, which it's kind of late in Will's recruitment relative to his commitment timeline, um, Linquist is the guy that can uh, kind of right the ship and, and maybe seal the deal with Michigan. And, you know, Dion was completely honest, you know, I'll, I'll say we wrote it in into the blue we had you know exclusive interviews with Dion and um Curtis Blackwell and something Dion said that you know stood out to everybody I think was he said straight up Will was ready to commit to Michigan on that big visit weekend so I've always said that Michigan just has to give Will a reason to pick Michigan but they haven't been able to and I, I think that Will really likes the stability at Ohio State and the amount of DBs uh, that they have go in the first round. I mean, they can quickly point to Jeff Okuda, who plays for, you know, his hometown Detroit Lions and was a top five NFL draft pick. So, I mean, Ohio State, despite him being a Michigan legacy, uh, is giving him, again, a ton to think about. And on top of that, you know, uh, Will's going to make a – Will's a smart kid, and obviously dion has been through the process before. They're going to make a business decision. They're not going to make a heart – felt decision but i think michigan has first swing they they just you know haven't been they've been hitting singles and and they need to hit some home runs yeah and you know i think that's a perfect segue because uh mo linguist maurice linguist seems like a home run hire from a recruiting standpoint he was just in the nfl you know if you want to talk development standpoint where that's all development that's all you know, connecting with your players and motivating. And that's, you know, one half the battle as we know, recruiting is the lifeblood in college football. So he seems to be a very, very good hire as your co-defensive coordinator and, um, you know, your corners coach and just as a recruiter on the staff. So, you know, maybe take Will Johnson a little bit out of the equation. I know you, it's hard to do that um, because he is such a big target for Michigan, but uh, just talk a little bit about maybe what you knew about him when you were down covering Texas, because I'm sure you crossed paths with either him or, you know, people that he was recruiting and in contact with, I mean, all the time uh, with how you know good of a recruiter he is. Um, what do you know about him? And, and I guess, what do you like about who he is as a recruiter? Cause I know you've, you already wrote a huge story on this. You can check that out uh, on the website. If, if you haven't read that yet at the Wolverine.com uh, you know, people talking about and raving about, uh, who this guy is as a recruiter. Yeah, I uh, honestly, I hated a linguist when I was on the Texas beat, not because he's a bad recruiter, but how good he was and how difficult he made my job on the Texas market. <clears throat> the 2019 cycle specifically was one that I remember very vividly. Um, Early in the process, Texas appeared to have the lead with all these elite level defensive backs. Um, you know, Texas, the state of Texas was home to three top 100 DBs that year and uh, a lot more DB talent, actually. And again, it, it looked like Texas was out to early leads with all these kids. And then out of nowhere, you know, it was one commitment after the other to Texas A&M. And all, we were all like, how's, how's this happening? We were all kind of like shell shocked and a big reason for that was Mo Linguis. I mean, he is a terrific relationship builder. Uh, and I think that's the thing that stands out to him the most. I mean, half the battle with recruiting is relationship building. And so uh, Mo Linguis can do that. He has great connections. Um, he's, I, I think, you know, if we're being completely honest here, Michigan recruits like a Northern school. I mean, it's more really straightforward recruiting. Mo Linguis is from the South. He understands how some of these big battles work, uh, especially with Southerners and how different the game is down there. And so I think it's a great out of the box hire or out of the norm hire for Michigan because he doesn't fit the profile of what they would normally bring in an assistant. Uh, but man, he is a really animated guy. Um, he's very well respected throughout the South. 
and, and even ha has coached it, you know, up in the north before at Minnesota. So um, I, I don't think you can get better than Mo Linguist. And I like that Michigan got out of their comfort zone and went after a guy that is considered an elite recruiter that does hail from the south, that does do things, you know, the way I feel the way I'm used to, the way things I should be done, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to recruiting. And so I think he's a phenomenal hire. Again, he doesn't have relationships with guys like Will Johnson yet, but I think he's going to quickly build those. And on top of that, he gives Michigan an opportunity to pull talent from the South. I mean, I don't even think the ink's dry on his contract yet, and he's sent out a boatload of offers down South to top level defensive backs uh, in the state of Texas and uh, even one in Memphis through a previous tie he had from his time at Texas A&M. So, you know, you can say what you want about Jimbo Fisher, but he's a, a tremendous recruiter and linguist was on that staff and was held to a very high expectation and exceeded those expectations. Like I said, he landed three top 100 defensive backs in 2019. He turned around in 2020 and landed a five-star corner. So he knows how to close the deal. Uh, you know, if there's one thing that's kind of stood out to me about Michigan is they do develop good relationships. They just, you know, with a lot of the assistance they've had, they haven't been able to, you know, have the art of the deal and <laughs> close the deal with, uh, with top level recruits. Mo Linguist has done that before plenty of times. He's going to have no issue doing that. So I think it's a, a tremendous hire and not just because he's a Dallas guy like me, but just because he he's everything you really want. And he's something that I feel like this Michigan staff has been lacking, at least since I joined the beat. Yeah. So I think some of the things you said there, well, I think it was all interesting, you know, but uh, one thing I wanted to hit on that, that I, that I thought was really something that I've been noticing really in the 24 hours of recording this uh, on Wednesday, since, Mo Linguist has been hired. It was a report that he was hired. It wasn't official. You may be watching this and it's official now. I don't even think they've announced him. No, like, they haven't. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're tagging him in tweets. They haven't even announced him. They haven't announced him. That's what I'm saying. Like, basically, the reports come out that he's hired. And next thing you know, kids are, hey, I've been re-offered by Michigan at Mo, you know, whatever his Twitter handle is. You know, thanks for the offer. The offer, like, you know. He's fire like he's immediately recruiting. He is immediately it seems aggressive in, in a good way. Like he's just like, I'm hitting this the ground running here and we're gonna pull some of these kids in and they're gonna come with me up to Michigan. Um and he's a younger guy. Um you see that trend with some of the guys that Jim Harbaugh is hiring on his assistant staff. You you uh, notice that with Mike Hart, you notice that with Mike McDonald. Um, you know, a lot of these guys and I saw a tweet. It was like the average age of Michigan's coaching staff last year was 46. I think it's from Scott Bell, our boy, uh, your boy. Um, and this year it is currently about to be like 37 maybe. Um, incredible difference. That's a stark contrast. Um, do you feel like maybe they're going in the direction of guys that are just like have a ton of energy, love to recruit, are good at it, and they can develop, I mean, just kind of the whole package there, but specifically younger guys that have that extra jolt of energy, I guess. I think Harbaugh is willing to take chances. I think he understands that this is a make or break year, despite the paper tiger of an extension, you know, it's, it's still a make or break year for him. I mean, if he doesn't win, this question marks that there were this off season are going to come straight back regardless of the paper extension. So I think he was willing to take chances and, and make some out of the box hires, um, bringing in Mike McDonald, who doesn't really have experience calling a defense or coaching at the college level, but was very highly thought of by his brother and others in the NFL, uh, bringing in a Mo Linguist, who's a straight up Southern guy. Um, you know, I think bringing in Mike Hart, despite them having it, their differences, I suppose. Um, I think all those moves, speak that Harbaugh knows it's time to write this ship or he's not going to be here, you know, much longer. And I think Tom Herman did the same thing at Texas this year. If you saw, you know, he was on the hot seat and his AD reiterated that they were all invested in him. 
and they just didn't live up to expectations. So even though he cleaned staff and brought in all these new guys, they still fired him. Obviously, you know, Harbaugh knows, or I think it's in, he's in a similar situation. And I think Harbaugh knows the pressure is on. And, um, you know, I'm sure Michigan fans hope that he doesn't wilt like Herman did uh, with his new staff, but he's taking uh, the right steps in ensuring that he has a different result than Tom Herman did. Yeah, I was going to say the Tom Herman comparison, uh, it didn't work out for him necessarily uh, as, as he is now a free agent without a job. He got a huge payout, so maybe it did work out. I mean, I would take that. <laughs> I would take that, you know, contract buyout. Um, let's let's all these topics kind of tie in to each other because you see even Mo Linguist getting involved with, um, you know, I, I could envision him getting involved right away if he's such a good recruiter with some of these kids in 2021 that are left. Uh, and I think you've even reported a couple um, guys that are now interested in Michigan, guys that are even committed elsewhere at this point that now you know have ties to him, were recruited by him before he went to the Cowboys, and are like, hey, he's back in the college game. I always wanted to play for that guy. Um, but you know, aside from linguists, and obviously, like I said, it ties in, what is left right now in 2021? Because it's coming down here to crunch time uh, ahead of that late period of you know the late signing period where Michigan needs to close the deal on a guy like Rayshon Benny and I'll pull up his picture right now um the rivals 100 defensive tackle from Oak Park who's committed right now to Michigan State uh any movement on some 2021 guys here late that Michigan really wants to to grab before the final uh signing day uh, yeah, I mean, you know, with the staff now in place, I think you could see them maybe extend some late offers. I mean, we're only a couple of weeks from the late signing period, so it's going to be tough. You know, Rayshon Benny, I think, remains the top overall target on the board. Uh, I still think he's going to be a little bit of a tough flip from Michigan State, uh, especially with, you know, like I said, a new staff that he still has to get to know. But I, I have heard in back channels that he's obviously giving the Wolverines a shot. Um, you know, another defensive tackle that they are still recruiting is George Rooks, who, um, you know, has continued to push back his timeline and uh, we're still here. No decision from him. Hearing Penn State's probably the leader, but you never know. I mean, he's very familiar with Michigan and they've been a top school for a while. And then aside from that, you know, Michigan only ended the early period with one corner commit. Uh, or with one corner signee and one safety signee. So you could see uh, linguist maybe target some guys or maybe some names pop up uh, that he's familiar with that he could potentially steal late. It's just slim pickings with, you know, um, the early period already happening. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, thinking of how common is it to, to flip a guy at the end of a cycle because Michigan fans have been holding out hope for so long because, you know, he is open to being recruited, but um, you know, at the same time, it, it, like, even if you are open to being recruited, you're committed somewhere. It's the easy thing to just say, Hey, I'm going to sign this piece of paper that the school I'm committed to sends me. Um, how common is that um, to do when, when you speak, you know, specifically Rayshon Benny or some of these guys that are maybe kind of coming into the, the fold here late um, and how do you see that, I guess, playing out and how has that played out in the past when you, you know, since you followed it so close? Yeah. I mean, I think it's not like overly common, but it's not out of the ordinary to flip a guy, you know, on signing day. Um, and I think you've seen it many times during the early period. And even before there was an early period, like I remember, you know, Jordan Elliott's a name that Michigan fans should remember from years ago. He was a Michigan commit. He ended up uh, you know, flipping like three times and just signed with Texas during the, uh, I think, late signing period. So it's not uncommon. I mean, Michigan still has a, a chance there, um, but it's going to take some quick relationship building. Anything else on the end of the, the 2021 cycle, um, you know, when it comes to Michigan? No, I think that's it. I mean, I think they, the key is landing a defensive tackle, um, you know, looking to see what's left for corner and safety, and then hitting the transfer portal. The portal, yeah, and, and they're behind in that aspect because of the lack of coaches. They've kind of, you know, put themselves behind the eight ball. At the same time, you could argue, you know, that making some of these fixes is more important, you know, saying, hey, we got to 
we got to upgrade at this coaching spot or whatever, and we can sacrifice maybe uh, a player here and there. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and, and how they can maybe fix some of the holes on this roster. You mentioned a couple of them with defensive tackle, with cornerback, um, that they have to get right, whether that's in the form of some stud freshman coming in or a veteran guy who was maybe low, you know, lower ranked out of high school but has that experience and has gotten better and developed throughout his college career is looking to, you know, go to a big school like Michigan. So it's going to be uh, fascinating here over the next few weeks for some of these recruits. And then, you know, maybe even out over the next few months for the transfer portal. Uh, but that is our show here from the Wolverine recruiting show for this week. Uh, promo code blue 60 over at the Wolverine.com for two months of our premium content. Absolutely free. Uh, so check that out, and we'll see everyone next time.